In this video, we're going to define a definite integral and see how it relates to the Riemann sums we recently defined. Here's a graph of the function 1 over x. We might want to find the area under this curve between the places where x equals 1 and x equals 3. So we want to find this green shaded area here. We could do that by constructing some lower rectangles. In this case, we have a right endpoint rectangle. We're taking the right endpoint of a single interval, so we just have one rectangle. The area of this would be one-third times two, so two-thirds. Probably not a good estimate of all the green area, but we could increase the number of subdivisions we have in our partition. So here is two rectangles. Now we could add this black area to this black area, and we'd get a better estimate. Or we could go for three or four or five or more rectangles. As we add in more and more rectangles, we see that these rectangles fill up that green space and we should have a better and better estimate of the green area. We could instead look at upper rectangles, and now we'd have estimates that are a little bit too big, but as we take more and more rectangles, we should get a better and better estimate of this green area. If we look at the difference between the lower rectangles and the upper rectangles, we get what we might call this error up here, the tops of all these little upper rectangles. We can see them better in this view. And if we take each of these little error rectangles and we slide them over and stack them together, we see that we get a rectangle over here that is, well, the top part of the rectangle is at a height of one, the bottom is at one third, so this is two thirds, and then times the width of each of these rectangles. Notice that in this partition, we're using rectangles all of the same width. So if we have, say, 10 rectangles, we'd be dividing an interval of length 2 into 10 pieces. Each of these would be 1 fifth, and so we'd have 1 fifth times 2 thirds. But if we make the number of rectangles bigger and we make the width of each rectangle smaller, then we get 2 thirds times a much smaller value, and this total error should go to 0 which tells us that both the lower rectangles and the upper rectangle areas should be approaching the actual value of the area below this curve, which is what we want. You might recall this theorem that says that if we have any Riemann sum at all for a given partition of an interval, then the difference between that Riemann sum value and the actual area we're looking for in absolute value is no bigger than the distance between the upper and lower value of the function, this is for a monotonic function, increasing or decreasing, times the mesh of the partition, the largest width of any of these intervals in the partition. When all of our widths are the same, that's just going to be something we call delta x. And as we let that mesh, or delta x, get smaller and smaller and smaller, this goes to zero, which means that any Riemann sum we want, a midpoint sum, left endpoint, right endpoint, upper, lower, whatever, has to get closer and closer to the area because the difference between the Riemann sum and the actual area is zero. We don't know in this case yet what this actual green area is, but we do know that these Riemann sums should get closer and closer to that value. We're now going to develop some notation for this area or the limit of these Riemann sums. The Riemann sum for our 1 over x function would be 1 over some chosen point in each interval times the delta x for each interval, and we'd sum these, say, k equals 1 to 50 if we had 50 rectangles. As we take more and more rectangles, these Riemann sums that we get should be getting closer and closer to the actual area under the graph of the function. We're going to denote that with this integral symbol then 1 over x, that's the function that's the upper bound of our region. Then we write a dx here. So 1 over x is the function. Here we're evaluating it just at certain chosen points. Here we're evaluating it at every possible point. This is delta x, which is a finite width of one of those rectangles. It becomes over here a dx, just as we see in derivatives, 
when we write delta y over delta x and that becomes dy over dx in the limit, our derivative. And then we have to specify which interval we're looking at. So we were going from x equals 1 to x equals 3. If we want to be careful, we could write x equals 1 on the bottom and x equals 3 on the top. So this expression right here is called the definite integral. This is an integral sign. The definite integral of the function 1 over x on the interval from 1 to 3. That integral should represent this area right here. We don't yet know how to compute this, but we could estimate it. Here's a spreadsheet that I've created. If we have a delta x of 0 0.1, then going from 1 to 3, the points in our partition would be 1, 1.1, 1.2, and so on. If I find the value of the function 1 over x at each endpoint, 1 over 1 is 1. 1 over 1.1 is this number, and so on. To get the values that we add up to find the Riemann sum, we're going to take that function value times the delta x, which we have here. And I'll do that from 1 to 3. And then to get the upper sum, which is the left endpoint sum here, I'll add up all of these values from 1 through 2.9, because we're taking the left endpoint sums. And I get as an estimate 1.13268. So about 1.133. We can now say that our integral from 1 to 3 of 1 over x dx is less than 1.133. If I want to get a better estimate, instead of using 20 rectangles with delta x equals 0 0.1, I could use 200 rectangles with delta x equals 0 0.01. I just need to change this formula to sum from cell 2 up through cell 201, and now I get an estimate of about 1.10 or 1.102. So a better estimate here would be 1.102. If I want a lower estimate, I could just take the right endpoints, and since the right endpoints are just shifted over by 1 from the left endpoint values in this case, get a lower estimate of about 1.095. So we know the value of this integral is somewhere between 1.095 and 1.102, somewhere around 1.1. If we wanted a better estimate, we could take more and more rectangles. There are certain functions for which we can find the exact value of these definite integrals. Here's a constant function doesn't really matter what the constant is, but let's let it be 2 for now. The value of the definite integral of this function from, say, 1 to 4 should be the same as the area of this rectangle, which is 3 times 2 would be 6. We defined a definite integral in terms of a limit of Riemann sums, not areas. So let's think about the Riemann sums for this constant function. I'm going to take a bunch of random points here. It doesn't have to be a regular partition like we saw in our last example. And it doesn't matter which set of random points that I choose. I could use more random points or fewer random points. It doesn't really matter. But when I build a Riemann sum here, no matter which point I choose in each of these intervals, all of the rectangles will have the same height. So when I sum up the areas of these rectangles, I'm just going to get the area of the green rectangle no matter which partition I choose and no matter which points I choose in that partition. So in this case, we could write that the integral from 1 to 4 of the constant function 2, dx, equals 6. Now, what if our constant function was negative instead of positive? What if we had a constant function that was negative 1.4? In terms of areas, this isn't quite the same interpretation because now we have a function below the x-axis, not above it. But again, definite integrals are defined in terms of Riemann sums. For this integral, we want the integral of negative 1.4 dx from 1 to 4. Now, 
this is a limit of a Riemann sum where all the function values are negative 1.4 and then I have these various delta x's and I sum this from k equals 1 to however many rectangles I have. But I can factor this negative 1.4 outside of the sum and this sum now is just the sum of all the delta x's so it has to be the length of the interval which is 4 minus 1 so I get negative 1.4 times 3 or negative 4.2. So we can say the integral from 1 to 4 of negative 1.4 dx is negative 4.2. Looking back at this graph the area of this rectangle is positive 4.2 but the integral is negative 4.2. Does that make any sense? Well if we think of a positive constant value as a velocity this means between time 1 and time 4 we're traveling at 2 units per second for 3 seconds we have increased our distance from our starting point by 6 units. If we have a velocity function of negative 2 that means we're moving backwards and so we have decreased the distance between us and our starting point by 6 units. Or you could think of a bank account where instead of saving $2 per day for three days on a continuous basis and you end up with six extra dollars in your bank account, if this is negative two, there might be some automatic withdrawals at a rate of negative $2 per day for three days. And so after three days or at time four, there would be $6 less in your bank account. Now let's look at a non-constant function, but one that's still not too complicated. Let's look at a linear function. Here we have the function f of x equals b plus mx. We can adjust the slope values and the constant values here to get various different linear functions. And we can see that the region underneath this graph is a trapezoid. We can use geometry to find the area of this trapezoid, so this is we could work out the value of this definite integral. Let's find the definite integral from say 0 to 6 of the function f of x equals x. If we subdivide this into several pieces and on each of those pieces we construct a midpoint rectangle, notice in each of these cases that the value of the rectangle area for each piece is exactly the same thing as the trapezoid area on that same piece of the partition because this little green triangle here will could flip over and fill in that little white space there. So if we take the midpoint partitions we get exactly the value of the integral. As we take more and more midpoint partitions we can see that these rectangles seem to fill up the triangle and so we should get the area of the triangle here no matter which midpoint partition we use. So using geometry this integral should be one half the base 0 to 6 times the height of the triangle which is also 6 at the right endpoint and so this integral should be 18. If we were to work things out with Riemann sum approximations we should get the same answer. Now what would happen if we let our slope be negative? Well, now the value of the definite integral here should be negative. If we let the slope be negative 1 fourth and we are finding the integral from 0 to 6, we should get negative this area, which should be 1 half times 6 times 3 fourths. So the value of this definite integral would be negative 9 fourths. What would happen if we had a function that was sometimes positive and sometimes negative? Let's look at this function. This would be the function 
3.2 minus 0.8x. We would need to find the area of this green triangle and then subtract off the area of this to find the value of that definite integral. The green triangle has a base of 4 and a height of 3.2. Then we subtract off the area of the red rectangle. The red rectangle has a base of 2 and a height, or depth in this case, of whatever the function value is at 6. Because this number will be negative, we actually want the absolute value of this number in this case. So here we get 2 times 3.2 minus 1 times the absolute value of 3.2 minus 4.8. So this will be 6.4 minus 1.6, which gives us 4.8. The green area minus the red area would be 4.8. We could find other definite integrals if we can work out an associated geometric problem. For example, if we have a function that's given by y equals square root of 25 minus x squared, and we want to determine the integral from 0 to 5, of square root of 25 minus x squared dx, we can recognize that this definite integral should be the area underneath this semicircle function in the first quadrant. So that would be 1 fourth the area of a disk of radius 5. And so our answer here would be 25 pi over 4. What we'd like to do soon is develop ways of finding areas under curves, say a parabola y equals x squared from 0 to 2, but we can't use geometry to do this. So we'll need to construct some Riemann sums and take a limit to get this value. We'll take that up soon.